Hello, welcome back to the Board Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally talk a load of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a game that flew under the radar a few years ago that still is underappreciated. We're going to be talking about Paolo Mori's classic Dogs of War. And this is a game where you'll be placing sort of workers or soldiers out onto the board. You'll be taking rewards, you'll be trying to aid these royal houses into winning battles that will give you victory points that will allow you to win the game and in this video we'll be giving you a very brief overview of the rules we'll be telling you what we do like what we don't like and then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not dogs of war is still worth playing today and in the future so remember if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you after this So, Dogs of War, how do you play this game? So this game takes place over three phases. And you've got the battle setup phase, you've got the mustering phase, and then you've got the action phase, right? So in the battle setup phase, what you're going to be doing, you're going to take the order of battle cards, you're going to shuffle them, and you're going to be placing two order of battle cards out onto the appropriate spaces. And you're going to be keeping two back that aren't going to be used, right? So that way, you don't really ever know what order of battle cards are going to be in play during each game, right? So next thing you're going to do in setup, you're going to shuffle the house cards and you'll be placing house cards out onto the appropriate spots. And again, you're going to be left with a couple that you ain't going to use. So you're never really going to know which houses are going to be in play during each round. And you're also going to be placing out the reward tokens out onto the appropriate space. You're going to do a bit of shuffling. And again, you're going to be putting them out onto the relevant spaces on the board, right? So you move on to the next phase, which is the mustering phase. And this is where you're going to be getting your captains. And your captains are represented by the miniatures that you're going to be putting out onto the board, right? And these miniatures will be sort of mercenaries that will be sort of swords for hire for the houses that you just placed out onto the board in the previous phase. So you get three captains in the first year, you get four captains in the second and third year, and in the final year, in the fourth year, you get five captains to use. And then you get a fixed income per year of three coins that you can spend. And then what you do in clockwise order, you will start mustering units. So you've got footmen, which cost one coin. You've got arc abusers, which cost two coins. You've got knights, which cost three coins. And then you've got war machines, which cost four coins. So once everybody's had an opportunity to muster their units, then you will move on to the action phase. And the first thing you're going to do on the action phase, you're going to have an option to play one of the two tactic cards that you were dealt at the beginning of the game and set up, right? And if you want to do that, you have to do that now. And then you may play a single soldier card onto the appropriate spot on the board. And the space that you play a soldier card is represents the house that you are going to be fighting for in that particular battle. So once you've done that, then you'll place one of your available captains on a free spot on that particular battle, and then you'll move the victory tracker up the number of spaces that corresponds to the strength of the unit that you played. And then finally, you'll take any rewards that are listed on the occupied order of battle space that you occupied. So you've got to remember a couple of things when you're placing out your units. You've got to remember that you cannot support a house if you've already supported the house that they're going to be fighting against. Some spaces have a prerequisite for, like, say, knights or whatever. So you're going to have to play a knight or maybe a war machine or whatever, dependent on what it says on the actual order of battle card. And it, obviously, if there's no spaces available on the order of battle card that you want to play, then you can't place no unit there, can you? Donut. So some of the rewards that you can get in this game, you can get uh, rewards that are victory points. You can get rewards that are coins. You get rewards that allow you to take extra units like arquebuses or might even give you an extra war machine. You might get rewards that allow you to draw tactic cards or you might be able to draw extra influence tokens, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So once everyone's placed all their units and taken all their rewards, then you'll move on to the battle outcome phase. And this is where you will top up who, won, what, and when. You'll look at which house is highest up on the battle victory track. And then you'll move that house's coat of arms one space on the house victory track. And if any house ever gets 15 points, then they win a glorious victory and then they place up two spaces, right? So the player that has the majority of captains on a winning battle will take the bonus reward token that is shown on the board, right? So the game will end after the fourth year. Every player will reveal all the victory points that they've accumulated throughout the game. And you'll add up the amount of influence tokens that you've accumulated throughout the game. And then you'll look at the house victory point track and that's how many points each influence token 
is worth. There's a couple of other little scoring bits and pieces to do with the support card that you were dealt. So obviously if you were dealt the pink support card, then if you've supported that house, if you've got influence tokens on there, they're worth more points. At the end of all this, the player with the most victory points will be the winner of Dogs of War. So what do we like about Dogs of War? So the first thing that we really like about Dogs of War is the shifting alliances, right? You might be backing someone up one minute and then in the next battle, in another battle, even in the same round, you might be fighting against that same person. So you could do all these sort of like bribes and all that sort of stuff. You could say, well, you know, if you don't attack my grandma over there, come over here and attack my uncle instead or whatever. So there's this sort of sense of shifting alliances. There's always this feeling in the back of your brain that if you stitch somebody up now, will it come back to haunt you in the later rounds when they've got more captains available to them? So the fact that this alliances in this are very, very fragile and also very fluid is a fantastic, fantastic mechanism. So the second thing that we really like about this game is the instant rewards. This game is constantly giving you stuff. It doesn't matter where you go, you're gonna get something good. Right. It doesn't really matter whether you miss out on that war machine. Well, it does matter a lot, but there's always something better on offer. And if you don't get that war machine, then there's going to be victory points available and or there's going to be extra influence tokens available for you. So this game just spews out rewards constantly throughout the game. You always feel like you're sort of, you're improving your chances no matter what. So the third thing that we really like about Dogs of War is the balanced player abilities. Every faction in this game has some sort of game breaking ability. Okay, it's not like Marco Polo game breaking, but they do all have this really, really powerful special ability. So for example, Captain O'Malley is the profiteer. He gains one extra coin for every battle that he wins. Sir Blackmane has the Spoils of War ability, and if he wins the bonus reward of a battle, he may take the strongest opposing soldier. And Lady Ordalia Macbeth, she's got the upstage ability as well as having a really stupidly large hat. When determining who gets a bonus reward, she always counts as having one extra captain in battle. So the fact that these abilities are also powerful and it's another one of them games where you'll be thinking well this special ability is fantastic but i wish i had their special ability i wish i had their special ability so you want everybody's special ability and there will be occasions on in a game where you're thinking oh my god i wish i had that special ability how come they get extra money how come they get to do this how come and people will be saying the same thing back to you how come you've got that special ability i wish i had that so they're all really well balanced and it's that's credit to Paolo Mori that he's actually gone through and made sure that all the special abilities are totally balanced, right? So the final thing that we really like about Dogs of War is the fantastic, gorgeous miniatures that have been included in this game. And that is nothing to be surprised about because this game it was published by Cool Mini or not. And maybe it's a little bit of overkill. We do really like the gorgeous miniatures, especially Lady Macbeth. They do look absolutely fantastic. And when they're all out on the table, it is really is a sight to behold it. The miniatures are gorgeous. So what don't we like about Dogs of War? So the first thing that we don't like about Dogs of War is it don't really work with eight lower player counts, like three players, and it doesn't really work with an even number of players. It re you really do need to play this with five players because when you're playing with three players, you're gonna have loads of empty spaces on the board where the rewards aren't gonna be there, right? And when you're playing with four players, there's gonna be an even number of people playing. So when you're playing with five players, there's always gonna be that sort of odd man out aspect of this game. Somebody is gonna be left on the periphery waiting to come in to disrupt that equilibrium between those four players. So you really, really do need to play this with five players only. And that's a bit of a shame because we do like this game, but we can't always get five players to the table, you know what I mean? So the second thing that we don't like about Dogs of War is the rule book is really thick, but there's hardly any rules in it. There's a load of fluff in the rule book, yeah? I mean, let's have a look. How many pages are taken up through fluff, right? So the actual rules end on page 17, right? First seven pages is fluff. And then you've got page 18 to 35 is just fluff and backstory. And I don't even think it's actually taken from any kind of like sort of cultural artifact, you know what I mean? So they've, somebody's gone through and actually written a load of fluff and a load of backstory to the characters and to the game, to the game world. But 
the game doesn't really sort of evoke that sense of a living, breathing universe. Do you know what I mean? It's just, there's no real, no point in having all that gumph in there. Maybe that's sort of like a, a, a symptom of the, of the fact that this game was kick-started back in 2014. They felt they had to include extra stuff and that was just one of those sort of, um, I don't know, what do you call it, um, stretch goal things. But yeah, the backstory, I've never read it and it just takes up valuable tree resources. So the third thing that we don't like about Dogs of War is, is it slightly overproduced? I mean, when we've played this, a lot of people that we've played it with are sort of aghast at the astonishing production values. And me personally, I do enjoy playing with the miniatures, but they're not really needed. You don't really have to have these grandiose miniatures. And in, in a sense, they do take up a lot of space and they do add to the fiddliness of this game. So yeah, I mean, just having that sort of big pink hat on a table even though it looks gorgeous i do feel like is it does it really need to be there and yeah i don't know i suppose it does don't it so the final thing that we don't like about dogs of war is some of the rounds do produce a runaway leader on the uh, battle track thing you know so if somebody manages to get up high enough on that track no one is going to be touching them unless they go out and buy a 10 foot barge pole to knock them off right and that means that the amount of options that you've got sometimes get limited not all the time but sometimes those options of about where you can go get really limited if somebody does a little bit of turtling on one of those battle tracks you know so i'm not saying all the games that we've, we've played come out like that and we've played this game quite a bit but there is some occasions where there's a little level of frustration that the same old players keep using the same old tactics where they just load out on one or two battle tracks and that sort of just pushes everybody else back into this little cave right so to summarize is dogs of war still worth playing today and in the future and we are going to say yes this is without doubt a five star game that kind of flew under the radar way back when it was released in 2014 and it still is underappreciated today and i think paolo mori's work in general it's kind of underappreciated. Okay, they've had a few, he's had a few hits with, say, like Ethnos and maybe Augustus or this game. When it was released, it didn't really do anything. And we picked it up and we, we thought, wow, this is an absolutely fantastic game. So it's one of the best backstabbing games that you can get. But its main flaw for me is that it don't really work at lower player count. So that means we can't play it as much as we would like to because getting five players to the table is sometimes very very difficult so this game sort of maybe just sits there a little bit and if if we could get some some way to get it well i know there's on board game geek somebody's done some kind of fan made thing which fills up the empty spots right but we haven't, we haven't tried that maybe we should try that it's just a shame that it doesn't really work at lower player counts but if you can get five players to the table then it is without doubt a five star game and it's one of our favorite games of all time really basically so yeah that's dogs of war remember if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you next time